Welcome. Isn't God good? Amen. It is good to see you this morning. Come and worship with us. Those that are online, we welcome you as well. It's good to be in the house of God. And I want you to sing. Amen? First of all, before we sing, would you just turn to the person there by and smile at them and say good morning? Would you do that? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Shall we stand as we sing and celebrate? Mark the Herald Angels sing. fourth Sunday of Advent. Hear these words from Luke. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliest of his servants. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down in the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. We light this candle to symbolize love. We love because God first loved us. We love because one of his name, one of the names God claims is love itself. We love because the whole of creation is echoing God's love over and over. <coughs> May the love of God come amongst us once more this season. 
We light this candle not to drown out the darkness, but to illuminate what we have to learn from it. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us pray. Loving God, what an incredible thing it is that you love every single part of your creation, including each of us. Help us to mirror your love towards everyone that we meet. In your name, the name of love, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you've come to worship with us today. And we welcome each and every one of you and the many that are worshiping with us online. We welcome you and it's so good to have all of you here on this beautiful Lord's Day morning. Amen. And I'd rather be in God's house today than the best hospital in the whole state of Alabama. Amen. Are y'all all right out there? Amen. Amen. Well, we welcome you and let's uh, bow our heads and our hearts together as we look to the Lord in prayer this morning. And just bring all of your burdens to him, because God cares for you. Amen. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather together in your house and in your name. We thank you, Lord, that you love us with such an incredible love, that you sent your son Jesus to be our Savior in the form of a baby in Bethlehem. And we thank you for the good news of, of the Christ child. We thank you, Lord, for the relationship that is ours because of what Christ has done for us. And we pray that in this service today and by those who are worshiping with us online, that you would reach down and touch every heart in life and bring them hope and joy. And may they all sense your love today in a special and a wonderful way. Because how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called to sons and the daughters of God. We thank you, Lord, for your love to us, for your blessings, for the way that you prove your love to us so many times and how you provide for us. Lord, we bless your name. We worship you. And Lord, I just pray that you would anoint the choir as they will minister to us in song. I pray that our hearts would be stirred by all that we experience today through the readings, through the music. May it all reach our hearts today to draw us closer and closer to you. Because you are awesome, you're wonderful, and we love you, Jesus. And we pray that you would minister to us and have your right of way in this place. And Lord, we thank you that you've taught us how to pray. You've taught us how to talk to you, how to communicate with God. And you taught your disciples to pray. And they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And you said, when you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We make it a practice here to affirm our faith and know that this is what I believe. For in these days when there are so many different doctrines and different beliefs and different persuasions and thoughts, we believe the people of God ought to know what we believe and understand what we believe. And so if you would affirm your faith along with us, with the Apostles' Creed, and let's say it together, 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're glad that you've come and the Lord bless you as you experience and receive this wonderful message about the love of God that is expressed to us in such a beautiful way at Christmas time. So open your hearts as the choir ministers to us today.
amazing theme in all the world is the love of God. There simply are no words that truly describe what it means to be loved by our Creator. But when Jesus was born in Bethlehem that first Christmas night, so long ago, his coming made it possible for each of us to know God's love as we could as we never could have otherwise. Jesus was one with the Father, but he didn't cling to his crown and his throne. He emptied himself and came in the form of a servant. In response to our need and in obedience to his Father, he chose love over everything. Gates of pearl and looked upon a 
over Bethlehem was heard in the stable. There was another song. The king of love filled his lungs for the first time and cried out. Perhaps Mary hummed an ancient lullaby as she held him close. God's promise of a Messiah had been fulfilled. <laughs> Thank you. 
first Christmas night remain a mystery. But one thing is certain, love changed him. Bethlehem would always be remembered. The word manger would take on new meaning. Anyone speaking of shepherds on a hillside, angel songs, or wise men from the east would spark countless imaginings of what it was like. It was all because God's love took an ordinary night and consecrated it forever.
Songs of angels, sung since the beginning of time, still exalt the love of God. The songs of the saints of all the ages rise in a chorus of adoration and gratitude for the love of God. Every Christmas, our song swells to a great crescendo of worship. All we really have to do to be part of this celebration of the Holy Night is to respond, to open our hearts to God's Son and say, Jesus, I believe that you came to earth. Not to conquer, not to enslave, not to dominate, but to show the world all your love. <laughs>
the story of God's amazing love. He gave, and now it's our turn to give, and our tithes and offerings as our ushers come and wait upon us this morning to receive the Lord's tithes and our offerings. I have no problem in believing that God demands our tithe and he deserves our offerings. Amen. 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 He's blessed us, given so much to us, and with glad and cheerful hearts we give back to him who's given so much to us. Brother Clyde, would you pray for us? Father, we are grateful for your blessings of today, for the beautiful music that we heard. We're so thankful. We're thankful for your goodness to each of us. We pray your blessings on us, Lord. We pray that you will bless this offering. All these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
hope that your luncheon reservation was made for 2.30. <laughs> I think it'll just be me and you at 2.30. And then you better have lunch ready because I'm coming home. These weeks of Advent, we have been looking at the names that were given to Christ by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. And these names are not repetitious. Each one describes a a, a very important attribute of his character. We saw as wonderful counselor that he is the awesome one, the God in the flesh, miracle worker and advisor. We talked about he is mighty God, the divine one, the limitless one. Aren't you glad that God is not bound by our human limitations? Amen. And he is mighty God. He's everlasting father. <clears throat> He is the Father that gives to us life. He is our sustainer, our provider forever and ever. He's everlasting Father. And he's also called the Prince of Peace. That's something that we seem to not experience enough of in our world today. It seems like that is one of the greatest needs in our world today is for more peace. Jesus reminded us in John 16, that in this world, you will have much tribulation. He never promised that this was going to be an easy road. But he said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Aren't you glad for that today? There once was a king who lived and announced to prize the artist who could paint the best painting that would depict perfect peace. Many great painters sent the king several of their best art pieces. One of the pictures among the various masterpieces was of a calm lake, perfectly mirroring peacefully towering snow-capped mountains. Overhead was a blue clear sky with fluffy clouds. The picture really seemed to be quite perfect. Most of the people who viewed that picture they said, that is the greatest picture of peace. But when the king announced the winner, everybody seemed to be surprised because the picture which won the king's prize, it had mountains too, but instead these were rugged and bare. The sky in this painting looked very angry and there was lightning flashes in this painting. This painting did not appear peaceful at all, and everyone was struck with awe that the king would chose, choose that one. But you see, if you had looked closely at this particular painting, you could see a tiny bush that was growing in the crevice of a crack in that rock. In that tiny bush, covered by the crack in the rock, there was a mother bird who had built her nest right on that little tiny bush. You see, in the midst of the rush of the angry weather, that mother bird sat on her nest with peace because she was hiding in the cleft of the rock. You see, peace does not mean that we must be in a place where there is no noise or trouble, that does not denote peace. Peace means that even in the midst of chaos of our lives, of circumstances, situations, troubles, and trials, there can still be a calm in the heart. That's peace. It's the peace that Jesus gives because he is the prince of peace. Despite the chaotic surroundings, that mother bird was safe in the rock. Friends, today, if you're not enjoying God's peace that passes all understanding, then you can reach out to him today in this place and in this time. You can give him your life. He's big enough to handle it. You can lay on him all the cares and the troubles and the trials of your life, for nothing is too difficult for our God. 
Let him fill you, save you, change you, live his life in you. You see, his coming to earth as a baby in Bethlehem was to bring you peace on earth and goodwill toward men. God became one of us to bring to us this peace. I remember hearing many times Paul Harvey, that wonderful, famous, memorable radio personality and commentator. Paul Harvey would read at Christmas time on the radio for decades this story that I believe describes to us so well of what God did in Christ for you and for me. The man to whom I'm going to introduce to you was not a Scrooge. He was a kind, decent, mostly good man, very generous to his family, upright in his dealings with other men. But the thing about this man was, he just did not believe in all of that incarnation stuff which the churches seemed to proclaim at Christmas time. It just didn't make sense to him and he was too honest to pretend otherwise. He just couldn't seem to swallow this whole Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. So he told his wife, I'm truly sorry to distress you, but I'm not going with you to church this Christmas Eve. He said, I feel like I'm a hypocrite if I were to go. He said, I'm just going to stay home, and I'll wait up for you all. And so he did. And the family drove away in the car, headed off to the midnight Christmas Eve service. And as the family drove away, the snow began to fall. This man went to the window to watch the flurries as they got heavier and heavier. And then he went back to his fireside chair and began to read his newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound, and it seemed to get louder and louder and more and more, sort of a, a thump or a, a thud at the window. At first, he thought, well, somebody must be walking by and throwing snowballs at my window. So he got up and went to the living room window to investigate and there he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow. They'd been caught in a storm and in desperate search for shelter. They had tried to fly through his landscape window, seeing the warmth and the glow inside. Well, he couldn't let the poor little creatures just lie out there and freeze to death. So he remembered the barn where his children had stabled their pony. He thought surely that would be a place that they would find warmth and shelter if he could just direct the birds to that barn. So quickly the man put on his coat and his galoshes. He tramped through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the doors wide and turned on a light. But the birds, they didn't follow him. So he thought, well, food might surely entice them. So he went back to the house and he got some breadcrumbs and he, he began to spread the breadcrumbs all the, just a trail all the way out to the barn door. Surely that, that would cause those birds to follow him out to the barn. But the birds just continued to flap helplessly in the snow and they never followed him. So he bent down and tried to, tried to catch them. And that didn't work. He, he tried to shoo them into the barn, and that didn't work. And finally he realized those birds were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I am just a strange and a terrifying creature. He said, if only I could think of some way to let them know that I'm, I'm not going to hurt them. They can trust me. I want to help them. But how? It seemed like any move he made to help those birds, they just got all the more frightened and confused and they would not follow him. And then he thought to himself, if only, 
If only I could become a bird. And, and then I could mingle with them. I could speak their language and I could tell them not to be afraid because I know where there's warmth and I know where there's shelter. And he said, I could show them the way to safety if I could just become a bird. I could, I could become a bird and they would understand and they would know. You see, at just that moment, the church bells began to ring announcing Christmas. The sound of the bells reached his ears above the sounds of the wind. And he stood there listening to those bells. Oh, come, let us adore him. And he listened to those bells, pealing the glad news, the wonderful tidings of great joy of Christmas. The man sank to his knees in the snow. He finally understood Jesus had to become a baby to become one of us so we would trust him, so we would not be afraid of him, and we could follow him, and he would lead us to safety and the warmth of the shelter. Jesus, Prince of Peace, he wants to be your source of peace. He came to bring you all the benefits of the Father and to be your Lord and Savior. Are you trusting him today? Is he your peace? Is he your Lord? Do you now know he became one of us to lead us and to be our Savior? He's the greatest gift that's ever been given because God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son Amen. to become one of us. He knew it would take that. If you're not trusting Jesus today, it cost him his life, but he wants to give you life. Amen. And it's as easy as ABC. You just admit that you're a sinner. And you believe that Christ died for you. And then you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And you will be saved. And you can be one of his. Following him. He's become one of you. To make you one of his. Amen. It's the greatest good news in all the world. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Amen. Because guess what? You only have this life to make that decision Amen. and to trust Jesus Amen. as Lord and Savior. Would you bow your heads with me? And I'd like for you to pray along with me. If you don't know Christ today, I, I invite you to come to know him who became one like you to make him make you like him. So if you would pray this prayer in your heart and believe it, receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior today. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for showing us the love of God, show, showing us who God is. You, you became God with us. You were still very much God, but very much man. And so that you could show us the way to God. You, you bridged that gap, Lord, and made it possible for us today. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that Jesus died for me. And I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior today. I choose now to follow Jesus, to serve him the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, I just pray that 
in this moment, we're contemplating that awesome gift. And we have made that decision to put you as first in our life. To enthrone you into the controls of our life. I pray that as people have prayed that prayer, that they would sense your nearness and presence today. And the new life that is ours in Christ. Jesus, thank you for all that you've done for us and for coming to be God with us. It's wonderful news to this world. And we bless your name, the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'd like us to stand together as we sing joy to the world. The Lord is come.